Are you teaching a crowd of kids from a stage? Do you not know where to begin and how to prepare or execute the lesson from on stage? Well, don't worry about it because I got you covered because I frequently do this and I'm gonna show you how to do it as well. Hi, my name's Hannah and I am a Kids Church Director. Check out the timestamps below for chapters and different spots that maybe you need to go back on or fast forward to. So you're gonna want to go to Canva and create an account. Your girl's cheap and I love using the free version of Canva so that you don't have to pay for it. But if you want to do a paid subscription, you can using the link below. Just know that if you start paying, sometimes it's hard to stop. But if you are a church on a budget, use the free version of Canva. When you create an account, you will see um, a desktop top that looks similar to what I'm showing you right now. Um, you, it's really simple. All you have to do when it says, what will you design today? You can just use five words or more. So I would write presentation. There you go. And you can click on that where you start from your media or you could start from demos. Now I honestly recommend just clicking presentation. Once you click on that, it shows you everything you can use. Um, I found some really good templates that I've liked and I, since I teach kids I like to do things that are that are cute sometimes but what I did I found a design that I really loved that was more along the mystery side template because um, for Kaboom when I teach for large group the series we're going on is about knowing the truth so I fell in love with this design so let me click on one when you click on one, it'll give you lots of different options for the slides you can use. But I like this one, it looked really mysterious. Um, it jumps in with what I'm trying to say. So I start off with the memory verse. I tell the kids the meaning, the reason why I'm there up on the stage is so that they don't be tricked. And I open it up with an intro. So I had a photo and I'm asking them, who is this person? And they're just giving me feedback, talking about the person. And then I conclude with that talking about how it's actually a photo of my grandmother and I know her personally and I know details about her that nobody else knows because I spent a lot of time with her. And so I intro that because I'm asking the kids, well, who is Jesus? Because today we're talking about what's the truth. People would say Jesus, some say Jesus was crazy, a liar, the Messiah, or they say he's just a good teacher. Then I follow into it with talking about, well, what does the Bible say? and we jump into the Bible, Matthew 17, one through nine. I have the kids, I let them know ahead of time that we're gonna read through a big chunk of, of the Bible and I want them to read everything that's in green. I specifically chose the words that were easy to read at a first and second grade level and I read the chunkier ones and the names. So the kids would read six days later, I read everything in white, they read they were all done there and then I read everything in white. Now, if you notice, this is a lot of slides because I'm supposed to teach on a pretty chunky um, length of the Bible. And so I make it easier on the kids by having them interact that time with me. Now, I also write, let's think this through when I have a whiteboard there because I get their attention off the screen and onto what I'm doing in person. I roll out a whiteboard. I talk about the different things on the whiteboard. And then we tend to come to the conclusion, the truth of everything. I have this little green, you know, what it looks like a stop sign, but it's actually not. It's the gospel ba bean bags. And if you're curious on how I use the gospel bean bags in my large group lessons, you can check out a different video where I explain what I do for that. And um, I go through all that to conclude that Jesus is God's son. And so what's the truth? Jesus is God's son. He wasn't a liar. He wasn't crazy. He wasn't just a good teacher. He was God's son, the Messiah. So that's how I prepare my slides. Um, like I said, I only use the free stuff. Now, if you go into Canva and you see anything with a little crown and that says pro, that means that it's for those, um, those subscription Canva users. Now, your girl's a cheap person, remember? So I just use whatever's free. If um, your church uses pro presenter or your churches use um, maybe like a flat screen TV to display their projection, you would want to save it. You can save it as a couple different ways. Now say, um, 
say you wanted to save it as a PDF to print out for your own self because you're old school that way. I, I print mine out. I'm not dogging on anybody. I print mine out now. You can save it as a PDF to print. You can save it as a Microsoft PowerPoint document, as a video, which I don't rec recommend, or as a PNG. And I recommend PNG because as a graphic designer, I save it as a PNG. Because when I save it as a Microsoft PowerPoint document, some of the font that I see in Canva is not transferred over to Microsoft PowerPoint. The fonts are just different families. So like I said, I recommend saving it as a PNG every single time. So when you click download, boom, you can then find it in your downloads folder and you can email that to your church's tech production team, whoever you use, just send it to them. So that is how I prepare my slides in Canva. Now, what I like to do is I like to save everything as a PowerPoint document and I like to go into PowerPoint and print my slides. All you have to do is go to your, here, let's, let me show you. So you go into Microsoft PowerPoint, go down and click on print. After that, you have all these different options. I come right here to the one that's under print all slides because I want to print everything. And you can choose how you see these slides. You could have it be just the slide and then an area for you to write notes or an outline or it just shows you three slides at a time. I like to have the least amount of paper as possible. So I click nine slides horizontal. If you click vertical, they'll be up, up and down. If you do horizontal, it'll show you in that sequence. So I love the nine slides. After that, I just click print, prints out. And then I like to practice with this with no notes underneath it. I practice in front of the camera at home and I add my little notes to this. That way I'm prepared. My daughter's like, you know, the really smart, not smart, but she said, you know, some people just put these slides on their iPad and they teach from their iPad. And I'm like, well, Thank you very much, sweetie, but your mommy has mom brain and has had three kids and can't remember everything all the time. So I like to write my little notes on the bottom. Also too, iPad batteries die. Sometimes your two-year-old locks you out of your iPad. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna wanna go back to some old school stuff. And yes, if I do need my digital slides, I can pull it up on my phone through email. And that is my backup backup, so. That is what I do. That's how I utilize Canva for really awesome graphics that are free. And that's how I engage a large group of kids with an awesome presentation. So I hope that this has helped you. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below.